Philippine city volunteers collaborate with local government to provide relief aid in Quezon City. A new Jinxi Books and Cafe is open in the rural school in Nantou, Taiwan, in memory of a teacher and grandfather, Chen Kechen. Welcome to Diet Headlines. I'm Joyce Ho. Thank you for joining us. Most residents of Payata's Barangay of Kizong City at the outskirts of Manila live below the poverty line and rely on dump signs scavenging for a living. Due to COVID-19, these families are facing economic difficulties. The local government sought help from Tzu and hoped to provide relief aid for the next three months. Life is nothing without garbage. That is the truth for many who live in Payatas Barangay. As the 20-some ton garbage mountain is here, residents in this area rifle through the garbage to see what they could sell to make a living. But lately, it's been difficult. I'm a single father. After my wife gave birth to our kid, she got sick and harmed our then 10-month-old baby who died. She's in jail now. I'm left to take care of our six children. I also can't find other jobs in Payadas. With the pandemic still going strong, the job of a scavenger is difficult to continue. Thankfully, a group of kind-hearted people are here to help. I look for junk foods to sell at junk shops, but I haven't traded in a year. The rice and groceries we got from Tzu Foundation helps my family a lot. Each recipient receives two big bags of rice, totaling 20 kilograms. They also receive sugar, salt, flour, vinegar, soy sauce, and cooking oil. This distribution is for scavengers of Quezon City. Today, we have helped 750 people, and we are working with the Carter's Foundation this time to complete today's distribution. Today we are so thankful, as it's the first time that the Office of Diasi of Novaliches is working with Tzuji. The local government and religious organizations are partnering up for a three-month project to help these scavengers get through this challenging time in their life. 74-year-old Tzuji long-term care recipient Tui Rui Ging lives alone. When torrential rain flooded into her home, everything was destroyed. Tzuji volunteers from Malacca, Malaysia, visited her immediately following the flood to see how she was and spent two days helping her clean up her home. After a bout of torrential rain, Chui Gyok Sui's home is muddy and needs a lot of help cleaning up. <laughs> 74-year-old Chui Kyok Sui is a Tsuji care recipient, and her home is normally cluttered with stuff that she can't bear to part with. However, when the water flooded her home, everything was waterlogged and is now beginning to smell of rotten things. This time, due to the flooding, we thought to check on the grandma after the waters receded. We asked if she wanted help cleaning up. She didn't have an excuse anymore because the muddy debris was so thick. Each time before, she would refuse our cleanup help, but we just want her to remain healthy and well. I think this is the difficulty with most solitary seniors. No one is there to inform them how to dispose of things, and they think everything is salvageable, so they bring it back home. Only when the volunteers come can they teach them what's garbage and what's valuable. In a way, it's education. There's no other way. The condition of the home is not a place for someone like her to continue living in. It's too messy. Using two days' time, the volunteers cleaned up not only the waterlogged items, but also cleared out some useless items in the home. Now the senior finally has a clear kitchen table to eat at. <laughs> Mariama lives with three grandchildren in Selangor, Malaysia. Her home was in a state of disrepair when a thunderstorm came and shattered the windows. Unable to restore the glass windows, Mariama requested assistance from city volunteers, who visited immediately to help renovate her home. 71-year-old Mariama is a Tzuji care recipient as she lives with three grandchildren. After a thunderstorm, her home windows were damaged, leaving the grandmother feeling helpless. 
On the day there was a thunderstorm, the windows broke and the glass shattered onto the floor. Afterwards, I requested help from Cizu volunteers. We came and saw her home. Many things are broken and can no longer be used. So we changed five windows for her and painted the walls. With the house lacking repair for years, besides changing the windows, volunteers also solved the issues of cracked walls, ceilings, replacing bathrooms, and the kitchen sink. The toilet is too old, it's broken, and it cannot function properly. First time participating in a charity event, Lo Kok Hong hopes to contribute his efforts in order to provide a clean living space to Maruyama's family. We've renovated her home. By doing so, she'll be happier and be more energetic. After renovation, the house is bright and clean. The family of Maruyama no longer has to worry about future rainy days as they can live more comfortably. The medical institutions in the suburbs of Sabah, Malaysia were facing a shortage of medical supplies. Upon learning about the situation, local city volunteers arranged trucks and sent medical equipment and supplies to three hospitals and one medical clinic in the area. <laughs> Using the transportation belt, the volunteers loaded boxes of medical supplies onto a truck ready to be sent to a government-run medical clinic in the suburbs of Sabah. Supply is quite limited, so uh, that's why we have to request from other uh, NGOs to uh, cover up for our need of uh, PPE. This time, the supplies were provided to three hospitals in Kudat, Pedas, and Kotamuru, as well as a government medical clinic. We urgently need medical equipment because much of the existing equipment is old, and new medical equipment needs to be added, especially in this epidemic. There are many patients as this medical equipment is urgently needed. And with, with, with this help as well, uh, we will be more comfortable in the sense that we will have enough stock. Actually, the medical clinic in Kodamorodu told me that they use the normal four-wheeled vehicle to deliver it. I said, if you want to use a four-wheeled vehicle, you have to make 20 to 30 trips going back and forth. Because there are three hospitals and medical clinics, let's get on to a big truck. To save lives, urgent material assistance is needed to provide effective protection for frontline medical staff. Fresh tofu skin can be cooked and eaten in many different ways. Taoyuan Tzu volunteers are tearing them apart and kneading them like flour doughs to make what they are calling steamed lotus buns to raise funds for Taiwan's vaccination program. A whole slice of fresh soy chip is already delicious. However, the volunteers are giving it a makeover by shredding it and this extra step. We need to do this so it sticks together. If we don't, then it doesn't stick. After we season it, we'll remove the excess liquid. Then weigh the right amount before wrapping it in a cloth. We try to remove more liquid while in the cheese cloth. Then press it into the bowl to make our steamed lotus bun. In one day, they can make about 500. When the steamer is open, the bowls used can be considered vintage. We picked up most of them from the recycling station. Most people don't use these type of bowls anymore. So we asked in our various group chats for donations of them, because these are reusable. Inside the steamer brown sugar, tea leaves are added for flavoring. When it has been three to five minutes after the white steam appears, then the lotus bun is finished. This has been the succession of bun making since the beginning of August of this year. I am in my 80s, but I continue to do tzuji as my heart is joyful. I was inspired to come today because I know this has the possibility of inspiring vegetarian eating, and also the money is for vaccination fundraising.
The goal is not too far, as this delicious bun can help spread vegetarianism and raise funds. Xingcheng Elementary School is in the rural areas of Nanchong, Taiwan. USA Ciqing Chen Yiwei's grandfather Chen Kecheng taught at the school for over 40 years and nourished quite a number of national tennis players from here, hoping to do something in memory of a grandfather who passed away in 2017. Chen Yiwei decided to support the opening of a Jingsi Books and Cafe in Xingcheng Elementary School to promote reading among youngsters. Listening to student performances, Chen Yiwei's grandmother recalled many memories of the past. I'm happy. I'm happy seeing them. I have lived in Yuzi Township for 80 years. Teaching for 40 years, senior Chen Kechen is passionate about tennis. He financially supported students on the road to become an athlete, turning over their lives. This ideal also became a main focus of the elementary school. My father has been promoting tennis to Yuzi Township in his entire life, has cultivated many national athletes. Now Xincheng Elementary School's teacher Zheng is continuing the promotion. The Jingzi Books and Cafe officially opens in Xincheng Elementary School, promoting reading to students. The space was made possible by a woman in the United States, Chen Yiwei, as she is the one to call for the cafe's adoption. They are around the same age of mine. They both are in the United States and are very kind people. When they were in college, they joined Zizi. After doing business, the couple saved some money. They didn't use it for their own good. Instead, they used it in a very meaningful way. The couple studied abroad in the United States Yet they found each other in a Jingzi Books and Cafe in Taiwan after Chen Yiwei's grandfather passed away. She wasn't able to attend the funeral. The Jingzi Books and Cafe built is to pay respect to her grandpa. Both the setting and the colors of table and chairs are suitable to come children. Today we are opening this up officially, but actually it was opened some time ago. At the newly opened Jingzi Books and Cafe, the good deeds started in California have now landed in Taiwan, setting a good example for the younger generation. Ciji Hong Kong chapter is about to launch the 21-day Healthy Diet Challenge to promote a wholesome plant-based eating habit with 30 participants. Due to the higher cost of ordering restaurant foods, the kitchen volunteers will be responsible for preparing the vegetarian meals. In order to let the volunteers better understand about vegetarianism, a plant-based dietitian was invited to demonstrate vegetarian cooking. The desserts made with bananas and the plant-based dishes seem delicious, increasing people's appetite. Those ingredients are very common. For example, today I just learned that yeast contains high B12 levels. It's really good. Even though the dishes are totally plant-based, the nutrition is well enough. To promote the Health Challenge 21 activity, the kitchen volunteers of the Cizu Hong Kong chapter will be responsible for the cook vegetarian meals. The Ten Sisters, who have been promoting vegetarianism for 30 years, immediately agreed to come demonstrate vegetarian cooking. She has been promoting a plant-based diet in Hong Kong for many years, yet the effect was not so satisfactory. That's why she agreed to come at once when she heard that Ji is going to do this. When giving the participants vegetable dishes to try, they would realize that vegetarian food can be delicious. And without using any processed food, the dishes made with natural ingredients can be so tasty. Even Tima daughters also came to help voluntarily. We will do a blood test again to see if there are any changes in the health indicators before and after the event. The event will start in November. Everyone is looking forward to becoming healthier than before. Ciji Canada chapter held charity sales in October to support Taiwan's vaccination program. Volunteers from five districts of Vancouver put on the sales once a week at the same time. 
In Richmond, the volunteers prepared glutinous oil rice, vegetarian chicken, pumpkin dumplings, blueberry muffins, as well as spicy dried radish. Everyone responded enthusiastically as the orders of each item exceeded expectations. It's the first time for volunteers to receive a super large order of 630 pieces of vegan blueberry muffin. The Hakka creative pumpkin dumplings are also nice after steaming. Suji gave us this opportunity to make some contributions to Taiwan during this pandemic. Throughout October, Suzy Canada chapter held a charity sale in five districts of the Greater Vancouver area inviting traps and volunteers to participate. Richmond District is responsible for making oily rice, vegetarian chicken, pumpkin dumplings and vegetarian zonzi. In our charity sale, many Tsuji brothers and sisters, volunteers and members of the public joined enthusiastically. The vegetarian chickens are absolutely handmade. The appearance is cool too. These Taiwanese food are warmly welcomed by the general public. We are making spicy jarred radish for a charity sale. Let's work hard together to raise vaccine funds for Taiwan. The charity sale was held once a week with an overwhelming amount of orders, demonstrating love from across the ocean. Many vulnerable elders who live alone are chronically ill and lack regular exercises. Social welfare organizations launched a home exercise program where trained volunteers bring simple equipment to their elders' homes and accompany them to exercise. Doing exercises together with a companion has proved to be more effective for these elders. Um. Using electric bands to exercise the strength of both hands, 80 years old Mr. Luo has improved more each time. Volunteers come to assist Mr. Luo once a week to conduct home exercise classes. I felt tired when I did exercise before, but now I do it smoothly. It's great to have someone to do exercises with me. <laughs> Mr. Luo, who lives for long, suffered a stroke five years ago. He rarely does exercises. It's motivating for him to do exercise with a volunteer's company. He often practiced at home, so his muscles became more powerful. Seeing that they have been making progress, we feel a sense of accomplishment. With someone else to guide or accompany the patient, of course, the exercise time will be longer. With the encouragement of others, this result should be even better. The disadvantaged elders who live alone mostly stay at home and lack exercise. Trained volunteers go to their homes to teach them to do exercise so that they can live a healthy life without going out. Today we meet a physician who is committed to elder care. He conducts comprehensive assessments for the elderly and integrated a cross-profession team to take care of their needs. He developed a program called Five Actions for the Elderly, promoting mobility, diet, articulation, brain exercises and social participation to protect the elderly's health. <laughs> The 91-year-old Deng Dongpu is a retired soldier, and in June this year, he was bedridden and didn't want to eat. In fact, he has always set a limit for himself to be 70 years old. To me, that day was very terrible. His whole personality was really in the state of living. At that time, I really kept shouting, Dad, I tried my best to save him, but I think he will really leave us. Although we are already, because he is 91 or 92 years old, this is an urgent crisis as we want him to be more comfortable and not suffer like this. What caused Grandpa Deng Pu's pain was a hip fracture, known as the killer of the elderly. The risk of not being operated on was higher than that of being operated on. Zhang Shunqin, the director of the Department of Geriatrics, convened various specialist teams and assisted them in making choices through family meetings. In past family meetings, patients might not attend, so he felt that Grandpa should be involved. 
He still decided that he would not operate because he felt that he was old and could leave at any time. He didn't want to waste these medical resources. He was more sober one day. I asked him why you suddenly wanted to have the operation. He said that he didn't want to die, but instead living well. Grandpa regretted it a little bit. He said he should have come a little earlier if he knew it, and it would be better. Studies have found that the determinant of death is not advanced age, but the degree of weakness and disability. Elderly care promoted by Zhang Xunqing emphasizes mobility, diet, activity, brain power, and social interaction. Elder care nurses play an important role in elderly care. One conducts comprehensive assessments for the elderly and integrates information provided by a multidisciplinary team, allowing doctors to accurately and quickly understand problems and draw up a medical care plan for patients. At the beginning, I directly asked Grandpa to practice sitting up because sitting up can show his physical activity. It is part of mobility for the elderly, like we said. After that, we let him move to a wheelchair you can also see if grandpa has strength. <laughs> grandpa actually had a coughing problem before, so today he's actually doing a health education with grandpa. We work on grandpa's vision, including some diet to see how to eat so that he will not choke. This part is aimed at training the diet of the elderly. Through the jigsaw puzzle, Grandpa can have more interaction and chat, and also train his language ability while speaking, which is also part of his eating ability and cough prevention. The training in cognition is part of old age. Grandpa will get up and sit in a wheelchair for a while, so today we will try to get him to stand up and take a look. I found that the genetic medicine department in Dalin provides sincere care for the elderly. They take the viewpoint of the patient and the family. They provide very heartwarming care. I hope to work hard to maintain the autonomy of the elderly and help them express their autonomy. I also want them to be satisfied with their current quality of life and current living conditions. If this is the case, then I think the goal of elder care is achieved. Malaysia entrepreneurs are inviting their staff to assist in the making of vegetarian meals and their deliveries to social welfare organizations. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.